Hello everyone! Welcome to One More Minute, I am your host Spectre and today I bring you this War of Mine. This War of Mine was created by Deep Silver and 11-Bit Studios. Now 11-Bit Studios was actually from developers and staff members from the company's CD project. If you don't know who they are, they created the Witcher series and as of recently, The Witcher 3. So that doesn't say anything. It pretty much says that this is a great you no, know, they got a bunch of really good members on their team. And 11-Bit Studios made the Anomaly series, which has done really well for itself. It's mainly on uh, phones, cons and, uh, phones, PC, uh, Macs, and on the older generations, and uh, Anomaly 2 on PS4. Now, let's get into the game. This war of mine, it's a survival strategy game kind of based on the war that we talked about earlier and it really focuses mainly on character development and how you handle certain situations and how you scavenge for food to stay alive it's more mainly uh, you're choosing between do I help these people out or do I kill them and take all their things that's really what it comes down to and we're gonna show you some neat little features that it has so we're gonna go to write my own story Right on the store, you can choose between any of the civilians um, that I have present, and each character has its own set of skills. Now, a cool thing that they added in uh, one of the updates, the last update, is you can create your own character. You can create yourself. I created myself, as you can see. I'm a, I made myself as a forester, so I'm good at chopping wood, apparently. And you can put in your own picture, as long as you put it into the, the game's file system. Which is really easy to do. They tell you, you just drop a picture here. You can change their picture or their physique. And you can also, if you don't feel like choosing your picture, you can choose a you know, random person picture or upload your own. You can choose between male and female. Your occupation, which you know, doesn't have too much. One's got like the uh, psychologist is you boost morale. Um, pharmacist, you're good with making medicine. Forest, you're good at chopping wood. Computer specialist, you're good at doing like things that require electronics. And police officer, you're good with uh, handling guns. Now you can change because there's winter in this game, and winter can be very deadly. It means you always got to keep the place warm. And because there's a like a stove or a fire, kind of like a fireplace that you can make. And you can choose between how long you can do it, how or can that there's no winter at all. You can change how bad it's going to be and the length and city map which you it shows you uh, you get to choose which locations you can go and scavenge at so each area has a different thing you know has different source of materials different people in the ruin villa i can have our soldiers or a couple live there a brothel you know everyone has needs during wartime garage looted gas station. I have all these places that have their own, a lot of them have their own different kind of um, environments you can have or in different situations. You can load a created map that you made. You can save it and use it for a later time. You can load a story you've already made and all that good stuff. You can choose how long until the ceasefire so you can make it really short or it's only 20 days, which you might might not sound hard, but it's it's pretty hard to get to 20 days. I average like 15 days, because I one guy dies and everyone just gets sick and they're like, oh no, poor me. You can you can have you can use a story that's already created. For the first, as soon as you open it up, you only have Kadia, Bruno, and Pavel, and Pavel, Bruno, and Marco. Those are the only two you have unlocked. And as you play and progress through the days, you slowly unlock more and more characters. As you can see, I've unlocked a good amount of them. I've played countless hours in this game. I think, well, not countless, probably about 20 hours so far. And if you die and game over, it tells you how long you lasted as 15 days, 20 days. I was really happy with myself, but I always end up, when I die, I, uh, alt tab and I close the program down and it's saved from the last day so you know you can always just you know it's kind of like a loophole in the system or you can just randomly choose and it'll choose a random one for you so let's go ahead and let's do 
Let's just do one of the beginning ones. Pavel, Bruno, and Marco. Yes, it's fine. Day one. Now, when you start the game, it kind of pans through where you live. And it gives you a brief story of you know, who they are. You know, they have a kind of little side story. You don't really need it, but it kind of sets the mood for the game. Uh, and this one, I believe, two of them are friends, and you picked up Pavel along the way. And so in the house, you can, as you upgrade, you can upgrade and build things. You can build beds, a radio, a stove. And then as you upgrade, you can fix all these holes in the wall, as you can see. I have all these little holes. And then you can upgrade the door. So we'll do the first couple of nights, so just so you all can see how all this gets put together. How long has the siege lasted? It's hard to say. Every day is a struggle for survival. The city is crawling with snipers, shelling is ordinary business almost every night. Phones don't work. There's a short shortage of food and meds, and many people are left homeless. Bruno and Marco have always been good friends. So when the war broke out, they decided to stick together. They met Pavel while scavenging for supplies. He used to be a Pogorin star football player. He's just another homeless victim of war. So they teamed up hoping for the best. So yeah, and as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff I need to clear out and fix up. So let's go ahead and we'll start him scavenging there. Hands mean they can scavenge it without having any kind of problems. And let's go as I grab that. And then we'll come down here, have him start collecting that. See, Marco is a skilled scavenger. It means he can collect more things and he can get things faster. Bruno is a good cook, as it pretty much does not really need any explanation that when you use him to cook things, he requires less materials than anyone else would. Like less uh, fuel for the stove and whatnot. Because you have to make fuel and you have to pretty much like make everything that they need. It's not just like, oh, hey, I can make stuff now. Um, Bruno, we'll have him, if we have a, you can gain items that will help you through certain situations. Like I need a lock pick to lock, unlock the store. And I can dig through this pile, but you better if I had a shovel. See, it's going to take him three times longer to dig it through his hands. All right. Pavel is a fast runner. Means if you come into trouble along the way as you're scavenging, he can dip out of the building quicker than anyone else can. So let's go ahead and have him break down the store. Oh, the security collected it. Now, if I had a crowbar, that door would come off a lot faster. So we'll go ahead after we get all these materials. We'll go ahead and start building. Because uh, we're going to need some beds. Because if they sleep on the ground, they they don't feel as well. Like, er everything you do during the daytime will affect how you are at night. So if you don't build something quick enough, excuse me, you uh, you might suffer at night. So we'll build a couple of beds. Uh, Marco is slightly sick, so we're gonna need to do a medical run. I always, the first few nights, I always try to get uh, medical supplies and food. Those are the major things. And if you build a radio, you get like daily broadcasts of certain things. Things will change. It'll tell you if winter's coming or, you know, what's a high value. Like coffee, tobacco, and alcohol become really main things that you can trade to get like food or whatnot. And each thing has a different value. So the radio will tell you um, what is of value for that time period. We're going to make, let's make a workbench because we're going to need some, uh, some lock picks, a shovel to dig through things and probably a hatchet and a knife because sometimes, you know, you go up against rebels and you want to be sneaky and stab them in the dark. Just saying. So it takes probably about five to six hours if you choose a guy to sleep for him to because when he comes back from a run, or if he's been up all night guarding the place, he gets tired and takes about five to six hours. So I, usually I put him to sleep and then I, he'll be good, good as right as rain to do something else. So let's go ahead and have Pavel make, let's make a shovel. I feel like we need a shovel right now. 
because he's still digging away. And what are you what are you doing over here, Bruno? Let's go collect that. See, he's slightly wounded, so I need to get him some bandage. Put a bandage on him, then make him sleep. Collect all the materials as possible. So let's get you down here. And let's have him unlock this door. This is kind of like a... The first night's kind of like a tutorial, so you get a hang of how to use everything. There's, as you find more places, you're going to need different tools. And that require you to upgrade your workbenches. I don't have enough materials, as you can see. It'll tell you what you need on the, on the left and what you have on the right of the numbers. And it'll tell you how long it takes to build something. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's, uh, let's see if we have enough to build a radio. We do. Nah, yeah, we do. So when winter comes, you're going to want to build a, uh, a fireplace so your guys don't get cold. Because they can get cold and they can freeze to death. It takes up. Oh, that's locked. And so let's go ahead and have him use a shovel. You can zoom in if you f so feel like it. Shovel's doing a good job. And they will have a commentary, a little dialogue thing to tell you how they're feeling. And if you don't treat certain wounds, they will get worse. I've seen that uh, happen, that if you don't get medication, they suffer really bad. So let's uh, look at the radio. And it tells you, it's recorded here on this piece of paper on the left. And it'll tell you kind of like things going on in the city. It'll tell you, later on, it'll tell you... Um, when the ceasefire will happen, so like, oh hey, and maybe in eight days it'll it'll stop. So that means you need to prepare yourself, and you don't might not need to scavenge as much because you're like, oh, it's about to end, so I'm gonna just wait it out for a little bit. I've never actually beaten <laughs> beaten a scenario, so don't take my word for it. But you know, because yeah, you can see here it tells you the weather, so it's still gonna be nice. So I don't have to worry about building a fireplace just yet. All right, that's a diamond. Diamonds are the only thing they're good for uh, is trading. Right, do I have enough to make another bed? Let's see. No, I do not. All right, well, I can't really do anything right now. So we're going to go ahead and just rest or end the day. It'll speed things up to the end of the till start of the night. And this is where you can pick. And as you go through the nights, it'll unlock all these little areas. Now, in each area, it'll tell you, you know, what has what. It won't tell you exactly, but it'll tell you, oh, hey, there's a lot of food. There's lots of meds, lots of parts. So let's go to this quiet house because we're going to need food and meds. And over here on the characters, you can see it has a number and then a backpack. That's how many slots are available for them to scavenge. Since, skilled, since Marco is a skilled scavenger, he can carry, he has 15 slots. So we're going to use him on the first night. But he's going to need to sleep. The first uh, first couple of nights, you don't need to really worry about the guarding the place. But we're going to have Pavel guard, just, just in case, because you never know. Because it's always totally random. See, as you can see, he has more slots than anyone else would. And you can take certain things, because some people might want to trade. If you know, it's always good to go there first, and then come back. And you can use a shovel... I don't think we're going to need it for the quiet house. Because the quiet house either has an old couple or it has some rebels living there. So we're going to just go ahead and see. See all these little hands? It means I can go ahead and scavenge all those. So you can grab that. I'm going to need that for building things. Now, this got some really high ratings on Steam. Steam gave it a 10 out of 10. Now, I believe this is a must-pick, like a must-pick-up game, because I've spent countless hours just grinding away at this game. Oh, yep, see, there's an old couple. And we can choose to kill them, because they're not going to fight back, or we can just rob them blind. You know, both actions will cause, uh, see these little hands? Little hands like, like they're picking up something? That means they're private property. So if you steal it, like people will and people see you they will react negative negatively towards it so let's go ahead and grab that and we'll see his dialogue should change now nope you don't want to say anything out of the way 
and only one person can climb a ladder at a time. So this comes in handy when you're going up against guys with guns, because if you stand there, they won't climb it, but they will shoot you, so you can shoot down at them. So we're going to go ahead and take, I believe food is in here. Fridge is always a good source of food. Canned food fills you up 100%. You need water to make meals. Sugar cubes, use it to make moonshine. Moonshine, you use it to trade. And I think you can distill it to make a make medication for it. Go ahead and steal this. Now, roll-ups are for your cigarettes and you for tobacco. And use these to trade. Or some of your characters, they might be a smoker. So they'll smoke it on their downtime. And it will raise them from being sad to being like normal. It's kind of like a morale booster. See, he keeps following me around because I keep taking all his things because I'm a big old jerk face. So we're going to need some medicine, though. We have food, so we picked up some food. We're going to need medicine because a couple of... Uh, he's sick, so we need pills. And uh, Bruno is injured. So, yep, here's some wraps. We need that. We need these pills. So we can just drop this in there. And right here... The herbal meds, they are good for making other med medications, but I use them to trade because they are very valuable when you're trading. You can get a lot of materials. Now, usually every day, someone new will come knocking on your door. No one's there to cause you harm. Go down here and see what else. But a lot of times, people need help or they're willing to give you something. Or let's open this open door. Nope, it's locked and or there'll be people willing to trade usually like a trader will come in and he'll you know trade goods for you and it's always good to have and you're gonna need weapons later on there's a military outpost and you can go ahead and trade with them but they only take tobacco or alcohol i usually go in with one of my uh, sneaking characters usually it sneaks quietly or someone that's strong and just go ahead and start taking them all out one by one. But don't do that till you're better equipped. So now you should have a little dialogue right here. I brought back the bandages and I'll see to that wound. They'll give you like little dialogues like this. It's cool. And they'll give you like an update of what happened. See the night was calm. Marco had been searching for his supplies and brought some interesting things back. Boom, boom, boom. And then if something happens, you'll be a character. Let's see, like Bruno was wounded. Or something like that, and I'll tell you if you've been raided. So let's see, Bruno is needs to be covered, so let's go ahead and give him that bandage. He needs food. Everyone gets uh, hungry at the end of the day, so you always gotta keep feeding people. Uh, did we make a stove? I don't think we made a stove. So let's go ahead and feed him. Make him make a stove, and I'll show you guys the cooking function. Which is a very, very much needed thing. Go ahead. I don't even have enough. Alright, so let's go have him. Did I, I didn't even make two beds. Hmm. I am. See, my next run would be to get um, building materials. But, yes. That is it for now, guys. I would suggest you pick this up. I would give this a 10 out of 10 because it's so addicting. You have new events going on. It can be repetitive, especially in later on, but it's always refreshing. So I would change it. I'd change it to about a 9, probably because it gets repetitive. But I don't have a, too much of a problem with that because there's always something new happening, new events. You know, always try to make it to the end. But please pick this up. I believe it is $20 right now on Steam. I got it for 10 It was on sale. So, but it's worth it. Um, it's definitely, it'd be cool if it came to a phone. I would definitely get this for a phone. But that has been it. This has been this war of mine for Steam. Pick it up. Please do it. And then we can talk about it another time. But I've been your host, Spectre. And I'll see you later.